so obviously in, in the last, let's say, couple of years, well, maybe a year or so, you've one of the things you've become more popular for is this lengthened, these lengthened partials, right? Basically, that's what used to be called half reps, but obviously it's a little different than what maybe is typically thought of as fewer reps. So if you think back for a long time, people who were doing partials were seen as maybe cutting reps short. It seemed like a negative thing. Obviously, Dr. Mike Israel, team, full ROM, and, and all of that. Um, and then in the last, let's say, year or two, we've seen some of this research that I think most listeners are somewhat familiar with, and we had talked about with Dr. Milo. So recent study shows all of that just goes out the window and it's no longer needed. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. Shit study. Shame on us. I have started whipping myself 20 times a day because of that study uh, to apologize to the public and really sorry for the free research. Um, yeah. <laughs> allow, allow me to say that lengthened parcels are Milo's baby for sure. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have been able to help with some things, but that's an area of, re of research that Milo is like the, the facto expert in. Um, although the latest study we published was something that uh, is is something that is very close to my heart as well given the overall involvement. Um, but like, just just to give a bit of background, this study involved us uh, wanting to put lengthened partials to the hardest test at the moment and create a study with an ecologically valid design that informs the training practices of lifters versus adopting a design where we would compare, where we could have compared single exercises one to the other and just to see which one would lead to more growth we were like okay in practice people will perform multiple exercises some that don't favor length of partials in terms of resistance profile um, they will do a bunch of indirect work for some of the body parts that they may be interested in in growing and overall they will we assuming uh, we assume that they will also go very close to failure or to failure so we designed a study to where we essentially sacrifice some of the internal validity for that external validity in order to give people something that resembles real world, um, real world training. Um, because at the moment we had, at the moment before that study, we had a bunch of studies again that compared single exercises and beginners. And overall, the trend was: hey, length and partials and training at the, training at the stretch was important. Length and training versus shortened training, length and training came on top. And when it came to length and partials versus a full range of motion results, regardless of whether you want to include that one study that people um, claim shouldn't be included, um, it's they were either the same or slightly better than a full range of motion. And in some cases, um, they were more than slightly better. But so we designed the study, um, recruited as trained of individuals as we could. We also went out of our way both in terms of IRB privileges, in terms of like getting those IRB, uh, IRB privileges, IRB not privileges, getting the IRB approval. We went out of our way in order to be able to include video footage of the participants, hmm. which is the first study. I, I think it's the first study, if not one of the first studies in our niche that has ever done that, just so people can see this is what they did. Yeah, yeah um, that's great. And um, overall, the results were that, hey, there wasn't much difference in terms of hypertrophy uh, when you compared a full range of motion with a stretch emphasis. Keep in mind, they had the same stretch end, end point. They paused for one second in the stretch, and they also like fully locked out their elbows, let's say, on the chest press, versus just staying in the stretch and doing partials. Um, and my interpretation was that, like, cool, this shows that the stretch seems to be quite important. Obviously, you had eight different exercises. All sets were taking to failure. But when I say to failure, I mean to the point where the full range of motion condition was trying another rep. So they were essentially performing um, an RP 10 or 11, whatever partial where they were in the stretch, like really forcing it. Yeah. So the results were not that surprising. And we even made a bet with Milo uh, on the video that I released on my channel, um, trying to predict the results. And I said essentially no difference because it was just just eight weeks and we had full range of motion with a stretch emphasis and multiple exercises like when yeah. you throw so much at it yes i still believe that there's something to lengthen partials but in that sort of comparison i mean favor the um the odds were stacked against them if that makes sense sure uh, can you go back briefly to you mentioned there's a study that some people say should not be included can you just kind of expand it's on that? the it's the Goto study where the 
the range of motion is argued be because it's like a mid depending on on how you see it and how you conceptualize the uh, or how you tend to analyze or not how you tend how you approach your your analysis of the literature and what constitutes long length training and so on and so forth because it's more of a mid range partial people are like that's not a lengthened partial but then when we're talking about comparing more lengthened training to short uh, more shortened training and it's just, it's it's a bit of a an unnecessary argument because even if you remove that study let's say you don't count it whatsoever right which i, I don't think that that makes sense you're still left with either the same or more growth by length and partials right yeah but overall i don't know like i get the controversy to an extent look this is a niche and this is um a, a community an echo chamber and um what's the word a scene so like in any scene you get into, I like watches. So I'm not into the watch scene, but I'm observing the watch scene. People are fighting over whether the black dial is better than the slightly less black dial or yeah, whether yeah, the okay. R marker is too too round. Um, similarly here, I get that people want to, you know, I've assumed there's some conspiracy and there's all oh, the like that partial cult and right. whatever, but... <laughs> Like the takeaway from the get go, and if you read any of the papers or listen to any of the podcasts where we talk about things uh, at length, pun unintended, the idea here is that hey, if you're looking to absolutely maximize adaptations, it seems like having that lengthened, like training your muscles at longer lengths is good. Whether you choose to do a full, a full range of motion or do partials doesn't seem to matter that much. And at the same time, hey, if you're trying to get the most out of it, the same way people back a few years, like a few years ago, when we didn't have much research on many things, would still do things because they were like, there's a rationale for this, zero evidence, but because I want to make every educated bet at maximizing muscle growth uh, that I can, I'll still do it. Same, same concept here. Like you have some studies. Yes, they're in beginners. What's, what does it cost you to do some like net partials? Nothing. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you make the same growth. So yeah. Rant over. Can you, so I would say for, I mean, I've been hearing about it for a long time, but some people would talk about stretch mediated hypertrophy and some studies showing, hey, by stretching the calves, there's growth and whatnot. Can you just explain to people the difference between stretch mediated hypertrophy from, let's just say, a full stretch, keeping it in that position versus length and partials? 